Lesson 9.4a, Modeling Surface Area of a Prism. Back in sixth grade math, in videos 15.1a, b, and c, we learned about nets and surface area. To find the surface area of 3D figures, we find the area of each separate two-dimensional surface, then add them for a total area. And a net is an arrangement of two-dimensional figures that can be folded to form a three-dimensional figure. So that's the net of a right rectangular prism. Now we're going to need to use area formulas for the different shapes in these nets as we find the surface area. And I showed this last time. I'm going to show it again. So if you want to take a screenshot, you'll have the area formulas very handy easy to get to. So here we have a net of a right rectangular prism. The surface area of a three-dimensional 3D figure is the sum of all the areas of its surfaces. And we learn that we can find the surface area of a prism by adding all the areas of its net. We have two squares and we can see that this is four units, this is four units. So we're going to have two times four, which is eight for the squares. We have four rectangles. They're all the same size. So they have eight units in each of the rectangles. So we're going to have four times eight, which is 32. And the surface area is eight plus 32. It's 40 units squared. Now here we have a rectangular prism, a right rectangular prism. We can see its height is 15 millimeters. And we can see this right here is 4 millimeters. So that's going to be this little piece, this little edge. And we can see this is 10 millimeters. So that's going to be like right here or right here. This is the net of the right rectangular prism. The lateral area L of a prism is the area of all the faces except the bases. So it's this area right here. It doesn't count the bases up here and here. This is the lateral area. So the lateral area is equal to, here we have 10 times 15 for this area. We have two of them. We've got this one and this one. We have two times 10 times 15. And we've got this area, which is 4 times 15, and this area, which is 4 times 15. So we have 2 times 4 times 15. Well, 10 times 15 is 150, so we have 2 times 150, which is 300. And 4 times 15 is 60, so we have 2 times 60, which is 120. We know the lateral area is 420 millimeters squared. We need a little square there, don't we? And the area of B of each base, it says of each base, would be the length times width of a base. So we'd have 4 times 10, which would be 40 millimeters square. So now we know the lateral area and the area of A base. The surface area S of the prism is the sum of the lateral area L and the two bases. So S is equal to 420 plus 2 times 40. Because remember, this was just one base. There's two bases, a top and a bottom. So we have 2 times 40. That means the surface area is equal to 420 plus 80. It's equal to 500 millimeters squared. So let's keep these numbers in mind. We know the lateral area is 420. We know each base is 40. And we know that the surface area for the whole prism is 500 millimeters square. We found that the lateral area L is 420 millimeters square. We can find the perimeter of one base of this prism. So it would be 10 plus 4 plus 10 plus 4, because it would be sitting on its base. That's equal to 28 millimeters. And the height H of the prism is 15 millimeters. If we multiply the perimeter of the base, this 28, by the height H, the 15, the product will be equal to the lateral area L. 
if we do 28 times 15, it's going to be equal to 420. That's the lateral area L. We can say P H is equal to L. The perimeter of one base times the height is equal to the lateral area. Now, if you recall, we found the surface area of our prism to be 500 millimeters square. The perimeter of the base multiplied by the height, pH, was equal to the lateral area L, 420 millimeters square. The area of a base was 40 millimeters square. We can write the surface area S in terms of P, H, and B, base. We have the surface area is equal to the perimeter of the base times the height plus two times the area of a base. That means for surface area we have S, for perimeter of the base times height we have pH, and two times the area of a base would be 2B. We have S is equal to pH plus 2B. We have 500, that was the surface area, is equal to 28 times 15 plus 2 times 40, 2 times the base. We have 500 is equal to 420 plus 80. Yeah, that's true. So we know that S is equal to pH plus 2B. When we express in terms of, it means we write it by using. So if we need to express the area A of a parallelogram in terms of B and H, well, we'll write A by using B and H. Area is equal to base times height. That's the area of a parallelogram. We have A equals BH. We wrote it, expressing it in terms of B and H. Here we have a cube, and here we have the net of a cube. A cube is a three-dimensional figure that has six identical square faces. We have one, two, three, four, five, six identical square faces. If we know the edge of one face, we know this is a three, we square it, three times three, that'll give us the area of this one face. We multiply it by six, one, two, three, four, five, six faces. We know this area is a nine. We multiply the nine times the six faces. We know the surface area. So if we know the edge of one face, we square it and multiply it by six to get the surface area of the entire cube. One edge is equal to three units. One face area is equal to an edge times an edge, which would be three to the second power. That would be a nine, wouldn't it? So the surface area is equal to 6 times the edge times the edge, the edge squared. So we have S for surface area is equal to 6 times the edge squared. That would be 6 times 3 squared. That would be 6 times 9. That would be 54 units squared. We're finished with 9.4a. We're going to move on to 9.4b. Finding the surface area of a prism, we're actually going to use that formula we found that S is equal to pH plus 2B. The surface area is equal to the perimeter of the base times the height plus 2 times the area of a base. So you can write down the formula to find the lateral area of a right rectangular prism, because you could use that in the future too, and this formula, S equals pH plus 2B. Have a really great day, and join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.